A Democrat congressman indicted for bribery. It's May 3rd, 2024, and these are your headlines. Big story dropping today on a Friday of all days. De Democrat Representative Henry Cuellar has been indicted on bribery and money laundering charges. The Department of Justice's announcement today follows a January 22, uh, 2022 raid on his home and campaign office in Laredo. According to a statement from the Department of Justice, Henry Cuellar and his wife, Imelda Cuellar, allegedly accepted approximately $600,000 in bribes from two foreign entities, an oil and gas company wholly owned and controlled by the government of Azerbaijan and a bank headquartered in Mexico City. Bribe payments were allegedly laundered pursuant to sham consulting contracts through a series of front companies and middlemen into shell companies owned by Imelda Cuellar, his wife, who performed little to no legitimate work under the contracts. In exchange for the bribes paid by the Azerbaijani oil and gas company, Congressman Cuellar allegedly agreed to use his office to influence U.S. foreign policy in favor of Azerbaijan. In exchange for the bribes paid by the Mexican bank, Congressman Cuellar allegedly agreed to influence legislative activity and to advise and pressure high-ranking U.S. executive branch officials regarding measures beneficial to the bank. That's a lot. Well, that is all from the Department of Justice. Notably, Cuellar previously served as the co-chair of the Congressional Azerbaijan Caucus. Did you know there was such a thing? They're making waves. If convicted, Cuellar could be sentenced to decades in prison. Now, before the indictment was unsealed today, Cuellar denied any wrongdoing. He said, I want to be clear that both my wife and I are innocent of these allegations. Everything I've done in Congress has been to serve the people of South Texas. Before I took any action, I proactively sought legal advice from the House Ethics Committee, who gave me more than one written opinion, along with an additional opinion from a national law firm. The actions I took in Congress were consistent with the actions of many of my colleagues and in the interest of the American people. Furthermore, we requested a meeting with the Washington, D.C. prosecutors to explain the facts, and they refused to discuss the case with us or to hear our side. McQuayar, who has served in Congress since 2005, said the indictment would not affect his plans for re-election. Cuellar is being challenged by Republican candidate Jay Furman in the November election later this year. Keeping in Congress, a new report from the U.S. House Committee on Homeland Security has revealed documents showing that the Biden administration has flown thousands of illegal aliens into Texas airports. The committee's report shows that the Department of Homeland Security has flown more than 400,000 illegal aliens into the 50 different airports around the United States since January 2023. DHS officials did so using the Cuban, Haitian, Nicaraguan, and Venezuelan mass parole program. It's called the CHNV program. It was launched by the Biden administration last year, meant to help curb illegal alien entries at the southwest border after the expiration of Title 42. The program is said to allow 30,000 nationals per month from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela, and allows for the illegal aliens to receive work permits and a two-year authorization to live in the U.S. According to the documents, and here's where we bring this home, 7,923 illegal aliens were flown into Houston, 2,256 were flown into Dallas, 171 were flown into Austin. Florida also received a hefty amount of illegal aliens with more than 91,000 being flown into Miami and more than 60,000 being flown into Fort Lauderdale. Other cities like Los Angeles, New York City, and Chicago have also received thousands of illegal aliens. Last month, Attorney General Ken Paxton, America First Legal, and a coalition of attorneys general from other states asked a federal court to reconsider Texas's lawsuit against the Biden administration's parole scheme. It has yet to be heard. Already in fiscal year 2024, there have been more than 1.3 million encounters at the southwest border, with over half of those monthly encounters being from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. Is it possible to morph from a hero into a villain? I'm Valerie Munoz. Join me as I introduce you to the most powerful lobbying group in Texas. One that started as a savior, but has become the very thing they were created to destroy. Listen now to season seven of Exposed, The Beast of Austin, available wherever you get podcasts. A Republican congressman is preparing legislation that would withhold federal aid from students who have been convicted as a result of anti-Israel demonstrations. 
Representative August Pfluger, who represents Texas's 11th congressional district, is chairman of the House Committee on Homeland Security Subcommittee on Counterterrorism, Law Enforcement and Intelligence. Representative Pfluger told Texas Scorecard, it's simple. Federal taxpayers should not be paying for college for anyone who engages in violent riot or assaults a police officer. There must be a return to order on college campuses. While the final text of the measure is being ironed out, Pfluger's office said it would be introduced soon. The planned proposal comes as anti-Israel protests have ravaged colleges and universities across the country. The University of Texas at Austin was forced to call state law enforcement after protesters constructed illegal encampments, which is against uh, recent state legislation. These protests continue at other universities across the country, including Columbia, University of California, Los Angeles, and many others. For more of today's stories, go to texasscorecard.com.